a fiddler on the roof. Sounds crazy, no? But in our little village of Anatevka, you might say, every one of us is a fiddler on the roof, trying to scratch out a pleasant, simple tune without breaking his neck. It isn't easy. You may ask, why do we stay up there if it's so dangerous? We stay because Anatevka is our home. And how do we keep our balance? That I can tell you in a word. Tradition. 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 Because of our traditions, we've kept our balance for many, many years. Here in Anatevka, we have a tradition for everything. How to eat, how to sleep, how to wear clothes. For instance, we always keep our heads covered and wear a little prayer shawl. This shows our constant devotion to God. You may ask, how did this tradition start? I tell you, I don't know, but it's a tradition. Because of our tradition, We've kept our balance for many, many years. Who day and night must scramble for a living, feed a wife and children, say his daily prayers, and who has the right as master of the house to have the final word at home? The Papa! Is there a proper blessing for the Tsar? 
Blessing for the Tsar? Of course. May God bless and keep the Tsar far away from us. <laughs> They form a much bigger circle. His Honor, the Constable. His Honor, the Priest. And His Honor, many others. We don't bother them, and so far they don't bother us. Of course, there was the time when he sold him a horse and delivered a mule. But that's all settled now. Now we live in simple peace and harmony. Tradition, tradition. Without our traditions, our lives would be as shaky as, as a fiddler on the roof. Put them on my head, by the stove, foolish girl. Where is Harva? She's in the barn. Then will Papa be home? It's almost Sabbath, and he worries a lot when he'll be home. All day long, riding around on top of his wagon like a prince. Oh, Mama, you know Papa works hard. His horse works harder. And you don't have to defend your Papa to me. I know him longer than you. He could drive a person crazy. He should only live and be well. Ritza, bring me some more potatoes. Yes, Mama. Harvard, did you finish milking? Yes, Mama. You've been reading again. Oh, Ava, why does a girl have to read? Will it get her a better husband? Here. Ava, ah. you're just coming. She's down the road. Yenta? Oh, no, she's found your husband's idol. From your mouth to God's ears. Oh, well, why does she have to come now? It's, it's almost Sabbath. Go finish in the barn. I want to speak to Yenta alone. Mommy, can I go to play? You have feet? Go. Can I go too? Go too. Oh, but Mama, the men she finds, the last one was so old, he was bald. He had no hair. A poor girl without a dowry can't be so particular. You want hair, marry a monk. Oh, but Mama, after all, I'm not yet 20 years old. Shut do you have to boast about your age? Do you want to tempt the evil eye? Inside. Ah. Goda? Ah, Yenta. Goda. How are you? I had to see you because I have such news for you. Oh. And not just every day of the week news, but once in a lifetime news. And where are your daughters? Outside? No. Such diamonds, such jewels. You'll see, Golda. I'll find every one of them a husband. But you shouldn't be so picky, because even the worst husband, God forbid, is better than no husband, God forbid. And who should know better than me? Ever since my husband died, well, I've been a poor widow, all alone, no one to talk to, nothing to say to anyone. 
All I do at night is think of him. But even thinking of him gives me no pleasure. You know as well as I, he was not much of a person. He never made a living. Everything he touched turned into mud. But better than nothing. Good evening. Is Saito in the house? Yes, but she's busy. You can come back later. There's something I'd like to tell you. Later. Her. Oh, Marshal, I thought I heard Saito, you. Saito, finish what you were doing. I said later. All right. What does that poor little tailor muscle want with Zaito? Oh, they've known each other since they were babies together. They talk, they play. They play? Well, what do they play? Who knows? They're just children. From such children come other children. Mortal, he's a nothing. Yente, you said you had news. Children, children. They're your blessing in your old age. But my Adam, he couldn't give me children. Believe me, he was as good as gold. Never raised his voice to me. But otherwise, he was not much of a man. So what good is it if he never raised his voice? What's the use of complaining? Other women, they enjoy complaining, but not Yenta. Uh, not every woman in the world is a Yenta. Well, I must go now to prepare my poor Sabbath table. So goodbye, Golda. It was a pleasure talking our hearts out to each other. Yenta, you said you had news for me. Oh, news? I'm losing my head. One of these days it will fall off altogether and a horse will kick it in the mud and goodbye, Yenta. Oh, I can't believe it. Take a seat. It's uh, about Laser Wolf, the butcher. A good man. A fine man. And I don't have to tell you, uh, he's well off. But he's lonely, the poor man. You understand. Of course you do. The cut it shot. Out of the whole town. He's cast his eye on Saito. My Zaitl? No, the Tsar Zaitl. Of course your Zaitl. Oh, such a match for my Zaitl. Oh, but Tevye wants a learned man. He doesn't like laser. But he wants the daughter, not the father. Listen to me, Golda. Send Tevye to him. Don't tell him what it's about. Let laser discuss it himself. He'll win him over. He's a good man. He's a wealthy man. True? True. Oh. So tell me how it went. But you don't have to thank me, Golda. Because aside from the fee, which anyway, Laser will pay, it gives me great satisfaction to make people happy. <laughs> what better satisfaction is there? So goodbye, Golda. And you're welcome. Mazel tov, Mazel tov. Mama, <laughs> what did she want? When I want you to know, I'll tell you. Finish washing the floor. I'm not anxious for Yenta to find me a husband. Not unless it's Mottle, the tailor. <laughs> I didn't ask you. Title, you're the oldest. They have to make a match for you before they can make a match for me. Then after her, one for me. So if Yenta brings oh, a Yenta, match... Oh, Yenta! Well, somebody has to arrange the marriages. Young people can't decide these things for themselves. She might bring someone wonderful. Someone interesting. And well off. And important. Match maker, match maker, make me a match. Buy me a bite, catch me a catch. Match maker, match maker, look through your book and make me a perfect match. Match maker, match maker, I'll ring the bell. You bring the groom, slender and pale. Bring me a ring for I'm longing to be the envy of all I see. Yeah. 
that even if you're not there's more to life than that don't ask me what oh, oh, darling to make my poor old horse lose his shoe just before the Sabbath? That wasn't nice. It's enough you pick on me, Tevye. Bless him with five doors as a life of poverty. What have you got against my horse? <laughs> Sometimes I think when things are too quiet up there, you say to yourself, let's see now. What kind of mischief can I play on my friend Tevye? So you're finally here, my breadwinner. Uh, I talk to you later. Where's your horse? He was invited to the blacksmiths for the Sabbath. Well, hurry up. The sun won't wait for you. I have something to say to you. As the good book says, heal us, O Lord, and we shall be healed. In other words, send us the cure. We've got the sickness already. <laughs> uh, I'm not really complaining. After all, with your help, I'm nearly starving to death. You made many, many poor people. I realize, of course, it's no shame to be poor. But it's no great honor either. So what would have been so terrible if I had a small fortune? If I were a rich man, yabba dibba 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 dum. All day long I'd biddy biddy bum. If I were a wealthy man, I wouldn't have to work hard. Yabba dibba 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 dum. If I were a biddy biddy rich, idle, diddle, diddle, digger man, I'd a build a big tall house with rooms by the dozen right in the middle of the town a fine tin roof with real wooden floors below there could be one long staircase just going up and one even longer coming down and one more leading 
nowhere just for show. I'd fill my yard with chicks and turkeys and geese and ducks for the town to see and hear. Squawking just as noisily as they can. And each loud beep, 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 would land like a trumpet on the ear. As if to say he lives a wealthy man. <sighs> if I were a rich man, all day long I'd be in love. If I were a wealthy man, I wouldn't have to work hard. If I were a pity, pity rich, idle, diddle, diddle, dig a man. I see my wife, my golden, looking like a rich man's wife with a profitable chin. Supervising meals to her heart's delight. I see her putting on airs and strutting like a peacock. Why, with a happy mood, she says. Screaming at the servants day and the night. The most important men in town will come to fall on me. They will ask me to advise them like Solomon the wise. Rebetavia, pardon me, Rebetavia, posing problems that would cross the rabbi's eyes. Yabadidada, yabadidada, yabadidada. And it won't make one bit of difference if I answer right or wrong. When you're rich, they think you really know. If I were rich, I'd have the time that I lack to sit in the synagogue and pray. Maybe have a seat by the eastern wall. And i discuss the holy books with the learned men seven hours every day. This would be the All day long I did it in him. If I were a wealthy man, hey, who wouldn't have to work hard? He had the diva, 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 Lord, who made that lion and the lamb? You decreed I should be what I am. Would it spoil some vast eternal plan? If I were a wealthy man. Oh, there he is. You forgot my order uh, for the Sabbath. Red Modka, I had a little accident with my horse. Tevye, you forgot the rabbis. I know, Red Mendel. Tevye, you forgot my order for the Sabbath? This is bigger news than the plague in Odessa. No, no, talking about news is terrible news in the outside world. It's just terrible. But well, what is it? What does it say? In the village of Rabjanka, all the Jews have been evicted, forced to leave their homes. What reason? It doesn't say. Maybe the Tsar wanted their land. Or maybe it was a plague. Uh, may the Tsar have his own personal plague. Oh, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Why don't you ever bring us some good news? I'm sorry, but I only read it. It is an edict from the authorities. Uh, may the authorities start itching in places they can't reach. Oh, Amen. Amen. <laughs> Why do you curse them? What good does your cursing do? You stand around and curse and chatter and you never do anything. You'll chatter your way into the grave. Excuse me. You 
You're not from this village. No. And where are you from? I'm from Kiev. I was a student in the university then. Aha, the university. Is that where you learned to criticize your elders? Well, that's where I learned that there is more to life than talk. You should know what's going on in the outside world. Why should I break my head about the outside world? Let He's break right. Their own heads. He's absolutely right. Uh, as the good book says, if you spit in the wind, it lands in your face. Oh, that's nonsense. You can't close your eyes to what's happening in the world. He's right. Kevia, <laughs> my friend. He's right, and he's right. How can they both be right? You know, you also are right. Oh, I am right. <laughs> and he's right. He's still wet behind the ears. Uh, Good Sabbath, Kevia. Good, Good Sabbath, Kevia. Good Sabbath. Kevia, oh, the rabbi's order. Of course, I cheese. of course. So you're from Kiev, Red? Uh, so you're a newcomer here. As the good book says, as Abraham said, in fact, I am a stranger in a strange land. That was Moses. Hmm. Well, uh, as King David put it, I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. That was also Moses. For a man with a slow tongue, he talked a lot. <laughs> and the cheese? Of course. Here. Have a feast. I have no money. I Here, no money. it is a blessing for me to give. Very well, for your sake. Oh. Thank you. You know, it is no crime to be poor. Oh, in this world, it is the rich who are the criminals. One day their wealth will be ours. Mm, that would be nice. If they would agree, I would agree. And who will make this miracle come to pass? People. Ordinary people. Like you? Like me. Nonsense. And until your golden day comes, Red Patrick, how will you live? I will teach children. Do you have any children? I have five daughters. Five? Daughters. Well, girls should learn too. Girls are people. He's a radical! I would be willing to open their minds to great thoughts. What great thoughts? Well, the Bible has many lessons for today. Well, I am a very poor man, but food for lessons. Good. Stay with us for the Sabbath. We don't eat like kings, but we don't starve either. As the good book says, uh, when a poor man eats a chicken, one of them is sick. <laughs> Where does the good book say that? Well, it doesn't exactly say that, but somewhere it says something about the chicken. Good Sabbath. Sabbath. <laughs> Sabbath, children. Oh, children, this is Patrick from Kiev. Uh, Patrick, this is my oldest daughter. Good Sabbath. Good Sabbath. Uh, you have a very pleasant daughter. I have five pleasant daughters. <laughs> <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> and oh, this is mine. <laughs> and this is mine. And this is mine. <laughs> Oh, and this is mine. <laughs> this is not mine. Patrick, <laughs> uh, this is muddled comsoil. So indeed. you did me a favor and came in. <laughs> this also is mine. Uh, Golda, this is Patrick from Kiev. He will be staying Sabbath with us. He is a teacher. Would you like to take lessons oh, yes, from him? Yes, please, Papa. Oh, I am really a good teacher. A very good teacher. I heard once a rabbi who must praise himself with the congregation of one. <laughs> Your daughter has a quick and witty tongue. Oh, there what she gets from me. <laughs> As the good book says... The good book can wait. Get washed. <laughs> the tongue she gets from her mother. <laughs> Marto, you're also eating with us? Oh, yeah. Of course, another blessing. Zeitel, two more. Spritz of Bielka, get washed. Mama, Mossel can help me. Get the table. Right. <laughs> Harbour, you go 
go too. You can wash outside at the well. Something to say to you. Why should today be different? <laughs> Kevia, I have to. Shh, I'm praying. Amen. Laser Wolf wants to see you. The butcher about what? I don't know, except he says it's important. What can be important? I have nothing for him to slaughter. Well, after the Sabbath, see him and talk to him. Talk to him about what? If he is thinking of buying my new milk cow, he can't forget it. Tervia, don't be an ox. A man sends an important message. At least you can talk to him. Talk to him about what? I have nothing for him to talk. Talk to him. All right. After the Sabbath, I talk to him. <laughs> Also, yet it was here. I saw her. Oh, well, if they agree on someone, then there'll be a match. And it'll be too late for us. Oh, don't worry, Saito. I found someone who'll sell me his used sewing machine. And in a few weeks, I'll have saved up enough money to buy it. And then your father will be impressed with me. Oh, but, Marcel, a few weeks may be too late. Oh, but what else can I do? Well, you could ask my father for my hand tonight. Now? Why should he consider me now? I'm just a poor tailor. And I'm only the daughter of a poor milkman. Just talk to him. But, Seitel, if he says no, then that's it. It's final. He'll yell at me. Oh, Mottel. Oh, I'm just a poor tailor. Mottel, even a poor tailor is entitled to some happiness. That's true. Well, will you talk to him? Will you talk to <laughs> oh, him? All right, I'll talk to him. Oh, good. <laughs> Where is everybody? Late. Red Tevia. Come, children, we're lighting the candles. Red Tevia? Yes, Mottle, what is it? Well, Mottle, what is it? Good Sabbath, Red Tevia. Good Sabbath. Yeah. 
Yes, Lazarus. Please, uh, bring me a bottle of your best brandy and two glasses. Your, your best brandy, Reb Lazar? Uh, you're getting ready for a party. Well, maybe a party, maybe even a wedding. A wedding? Well, I can help to make the wedding merry, lead the dancing and so forth <laughs> for a little fee, naturally. <laughs> naturally. A wedding is no wedding without you and your thieves. <laughs> Oh, yeah. no, it was stupid. <laughs> good evening. 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 Good how goes it with you, Ted? Yeah. How should it go? You're right. And you? The same. I'm sorry to hear that. So, uh, how's your brother-in-law in America? I believe he is doing very well. He wrote you? Not late. Uh, then, uh, how do you know? If he was doing badly, he would write. May I? Tevye, I suppose you know why I wanted to see you. Yes, I do, Reblazer. But there is no use talking about it. Why not? Why, yes. Why should I get rid of her? Well, uh, you have a few more without her. Oh, I see. Today you want one, tomorrow you may want two. Two? What would I do with two? The same as you do with one. Opinion. This is very important to me. Why is it important to you? Frankly, because I am lonesome. <laughs> lonesome? What are you talking about? You don't know? We're talking about my new milk cow, the one you want to buy from me. <laughs> new milk cow? So I won't be lonesome. What's funny? I don't imagine daughter. It's daughter's I told. I do. Oh, you do the title. I see her every Thursday in my butcher shop. She has made a very good impression on me. I like her. That's for me, as you know, Tender. I am pretty well off. I have my own house, a good store, a servant. No, Tender. Why do we have to try and impress one another? Let's just shake hands and call it a match. And you won't need a dowry for that. You might even find a little something in your own purse, too. Shame on you, shame! My purse? My daughter is not the sort I would sell for money. All right, all right, all right, just as you say. We won't talk about money. The main thing is, let's get it done with. And I will be good to her, tell you. Like her. Well, what do you think? What do I think? What do I think? I never liked him. Why should I? You can have a fine conversation with him if you talk about kidneys and livers. On the other hand, not everyone has to be a scholar. And with a butcher, my daughter would surely never know hunger. And if you're wealthy enough, no one will ever call you stupid. But he has a problem. He's much older than her. That's her problem. But she's younger. That's his problem. I always thought of him as a butcher, but I misjudged him. He is a good man. He will try to take care of her. What do I think? It's a match. You agree? I agree. Ah, oh, damn you, that's wonderful. Let's drink on it. Why not, my friend? <laughs> to you. No, my friends, to you. <laughs> To the both of us. To our agreement. To our agreement. To our prosperity. To our good health and happiness. And most important, to life, to life, the Chaim. I am the Chaim, to life. 
is to the father I try to be. The emperor I try to be. Drink the Chaim, who like, who like the Chaim. The Chaim, the Chaim, who like. That has a way of confusing us. Blessing and bruising us. Drink the Chaim, who like. God would ask us to be joyful, even when our hearts might pant it on the floor. How much more can we be joyful when there's really something to be joyful for? To life, to life, look higher. To say to my daughter, my wife, it gives you something to think about, something to drink about. Drink the higher.
You'll be my papa. <laughs> Your papa. I always wanted a son. But one a little younger than myself. <laughs> 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 you, you, what's the celebration here? It's you tell me. <laughs> Tevia's daughter. He's marrying off his marrying. daughter. He's marrying. Oh, you don't say. No? Oh, Tevius, allow me to offer my congratulations, old friend. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm. Oh, Tevius, before I forget, I have a piece of news here. Something which I thought I should tell you as a friend. I'm only giving you this news because I like you. Oh. You know, I think you're a decent, honest person, too, even though you're a Jewish dog. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. How often does a man get a compliment like that? And your news? We received orders that sometime soon this district is to have a little unofficial demonstration. Wrong here? No. Just, just a little unofficial demonstration, that's all. Nothing too serious, I shouldn't think. Just, just a little mischief. So that if an inspector comes through, he'll see that we've done our duty. Personally, I don't see why there has to be trouble like this between people. You know, I thought if I told you, well, you, know, you can tell the other villagers. Thank you, Your Honor. You are a decent man. If I may say so, it's too bad you are not a Jew. <laughs> That's what I like about you, Tevia. You're always joking. Oh, and congratulations again for your daughter. Thank you, Your Honor. Goodbye. Where you go? You have to give me news like that just before my daughter's wedding. I know we are the chosen people, but once in a while, why can't you choose someone else? Anyway, thank you for sending a husband for my daughter. Chaim. Now, children, I'll tell you a story from the Bible of Laban and Jacob, and then we can discuss it together, all right? Good. Now, Laban had two daughters, Leah and the beautiful Rachel. Jacob was in love with the younger, Rachel, so he asked Laban for her hand. Well, Laban agreed, if Jacob would work for him for seven years. Was Laban a mean man? He was an employer. Now, after seven years, do you know what happened? Laban fooled Jacob and gave him his ugly daughter, Leah. So to marry Rachel, Jacob was forced to work for another seven years. So you see, children, the Bible clearly teaches us you must never trust an employer. Do you understand? Yes, sir, sir. Good. Papa isn't now. up yet? No, Mama. Then enough lessons. We have to do Papa's work today. How long can he sleep? He staggered home last night and fell into bed like a dead man. I couldn't get a word out of him. Put that away and clean the barn. Call me when Papa gets up. That was a very interesting lesson, Perchette. Do you think so? Well, I don't know if the rabbi would agree with your interpretation. And neither, I suppose, would the rabbi's son. My little sisters have big tongues. 
And what do you know about him except that he is the rabbi's son? Would you be interested in him if he were, say, the shoemaker's son or the tinsmith's son? At least I know this. He doesn't have any strange ideas about turning the world upside down. And certainly any new ideas would be strange to you. Remember the Lord said, let there be light. Yes, but he was not talking to you personally. You have spirit. Even a little intelligence, perhaps. Thank you. But what good is your brain without curiosity? It is a rusty tool. Good day, Hoddle. We have an old custom here. A boy acts respectfully to a girl, although that is too traditional for an advanced thinker like you. Our traditions. Nothing must change. Everything is perfect exactly the way it is. We like our ways. Our ways are changing all over, but here. Here, men and women must stay apart. Men study, women in the kitchen. Boys and girls should not touch must not even look at each other. I am looking at you. You are very brave. Do you know that in the city, boys and girls can be affectionate without permission of a matchmaker? They hold hands together. They even dance together, and you dance like this. <laughs> Do you like it? It is very nice. <laughs> there, we've just changed an old custom. Thank you. I mean, you're welcome. I mean, good day. Good day. Good day. Uh, Spritzer. Oh, what's her name? Hoddle, Papa. Uh, where is Zeitel? She's in the barn. Call her out. Uh, El Petschik, how did the lesson go today? Well, I think we ah, made a good beginning. He's fine oh, he's finally up. So, what happened last night besides your drinking like a peasant? Did you see Laser Wolf? What did he say? What did you say? Do you have news? Patience, woman! As the good book says, good news will stay and bad news will refuse to leave. And there's another saying. You could die from such a man. Zaitul, my lamb, come here. You are to be congratulated. You are going to be married. Married? What do you mean, Papa? Laser Wolf has asked for your hand. I knew it! Butcher. Oh, my heart told me all day this was to be our lucky day. Oh, dear God, I thank thee, I thank thee. And what have you to say? Oh, I what mean. can she say? Oh. My firstborn, a bride. May you grow old with him in fortune and honor. Not like through Masera, that first wife of his. Oh, she was a bitter woman. May she rest in peace. Not like my Zaitel. Now I must thank you, enter. My Zaitel, a bride, a bride. Oh, Mazel Tov, Zaitel. You call that a Mazel Tov? <laughs> Mazel Tov, Zaitel. And you, Patrick, aren't you going to congratulate her? Congratulations, Zaitel, for getting a rich man. Again with the rich. What's wrong with being rich? It is no reason to marry. Money is the world's curse. May the Lord smite me with it. <laughs> and may I never recover. <laughs> Zeitel knows I only mean her welfare. Am I right, Zeitel? Yes, Papa. There, you see. I see. I see very well. Are you not happy with this blessing? Papa! Papa! What is it? What is it? Tell me. Papa, I don't want to marry him. I can't marry him. I can't. Can't marry him? If I say you will, you will. Oh, Papa, if it's a matter of money, I'll do anything. I'll, I'll hire myself as a servant. I'll dig ditches. I'll hold rocks. Only don't make me marry him, Papa, please. What's wrong with Laser? He likes Oh, Papa, you. I'll be unhappy all my days, all my life. I'll be unhappy. I'll dig ditches, I'll hold rocks. But we made an agreement, and with us, an agreement is an agreement. Is that more important than I am, Papa? Oh, Papa, please, please don't force me. Please, Papa. All right. I won't force you. Oh, thank you, Papa. Thank you. It seems it was not ordained.
brain that you should have all the comforts of love. Reb Tellier, may I speak with you? Later, model, later. Oh, I would like to speak with you. Not now, model, I have problems. That's what I want to speak to you about. I think I can help. Certainly, like a bandage can help a corpse. Goodbye, model. Oh, Goodbye. Papa, please, at least listen to him. All right, you have a tongue talk. Well, I hear you are arranging a match for Zeitel. He also has ears. I have a match for Zeitel. <laughs> what kind of a match? A perfect fit. A perfect fit. I like a glove. I like a glove. This match was made exactly to measure. Made to measure, a perfect fit. Stop talking like a tailor and tell me, who is it? Please don't shout at me, Rev Tempia. All right. completely out of your mind, or you're crazy. He must be crazy. What are you? The bridegroom, the guests, the matchmaker, all rolled into one? I suppose you'll even perform the ceremony. You must be crazy. Oh, please don't shout at me, Rev Tevya. Uh, as for being my own matchmaker, I know it's a little unusual. Unusual? It's crazy. Well, times are changing, Rev Tevya. The thing is, your daughter Zaita and I gave each other our pledge over a year ago uh, that we would marry. <laughs> Each other a pledge? Yes, Papa. We gave each other a pledge. They gave each other a pledge? Unheard of. Absurd. You gave each other a pledge? Unthinkable. Where do you think you are? In Moscow? In Paris? Where do they think they are? America? And what do you think you're doing? You stitch you nothing. Who do you think you are? King Solomon? This isn't the way it's done. Not here, not now. Some things I will not, I cannot allow. Tradition. Marriages must be arranged by the father. This must never be changed. One little time you pull out a prop and where does it stop? Where does it stop? Where does it stop? Do I have anything to say about my daughter? Or doesn't anyone have to ask a father anymore? Oh, I've wanted to ask you for some time, Red Tevye. The thing is, I've wanted to save up enough money for my own sewing machine. Stop talking nonsense! You're just a poor tailor! Oh, that's true, Red Tevye. But even a poor tailor's entitled to some happiness. I promise you, Red Tevye, your daughter will not starve. beginning to talk like a man. On the other hand, what kind of a match would that be with a poor tailor? On the other hand, he is an honest, hard worker. On the other hand, he has absolutely nothing. On the other hand, things cannot get worse for him. <laughs> they can only get better. They gave each other a pledge. Absurd. You gave each other a pledge. Unthinkable. But look at my daughter's face. She loves him. She wants him. And look at my daughter's eyes. So hopeful. Tradition! Modern children. Very well, children. When shall we make the wedding? Oh, thank you, Papa! Oh, thank, you. thank you, Papa! Thank you, Papa. You won't be sorry. You won't be sorry? No. I'm sorry already. Oh, thank you, Papa! Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. Modern children. What am I going to tell Golda? What am I going to tell Golda? Hell! It was a miracle. <laughs>
Wonder of wonder, miracle of miracles, God took a Daniel once again, stood by his side, and a miracle of miracles walked him through the lion's den. Wonder of wonder, miracle of miracles, I was afraid that God would frown, but like he did so long ago in Jericho, God just made a wall fall down. When Moses softened Pharaoh's heart, that was a miracle. When God made the waters of the Red Sea part, that was a miracle too. Heart of all God's miracles, large and small, the most miraculous one of all is that out of a worthless lump of clay, God has made a man today. Wonder of wonder, miracle of miracles, God took a tail of by the hand, turned him around, and a miracle of miracles led him to the promised land. When David slew Goliath, Yes, that was a miracle. When God gave us man in the wilderness, that was a miracle too. Heart of all God's miracles, large and small, the most miraculous one of all is the one. and I'll tell you what it meant. Oh, it was terrible. Tell me. Oh, all right, but don't be frightened. Tell me. All right, this was my dream. I dreamt we were having a celebration of some kind. Everyone we knew was there, and the musicians, too. In the middle of my dream, in walks your grandmother Zeitel. May she rest in peace. Grandmother Zeit? How did she look? Well, for a woman who's been dead 30 years, she looked very good. Naturally, I went up to greet her. She said... A blessing on your head. Mazel tov, mazel tov. To see a daughter wed. Mazel tov, mazel tov. And such a son-in-law, like no one ever saw. That Kayla Mati comes Mortal? A worthy boy is he. Mazel tov, mazel tov. A pious family. Mazel tov, mazel tov. They named him after my dear Uncle Mordechai, the tailor Mottl Kamsoy. A tailor? She must have heard wrong. She meant a butcher. I'll tell her. You must have heard wrong, Grandma. Fella. You mean the butcher, Grandpa, by the name of Laser Wolf? No! I mean a tailor, tear ah. down my great grandchild. What is a cycle who you named for me? Monsters bright was meant to be. For such a match, I pray. Mazel tov, mazel 
gotcha. I'll tell her. But we announced it, Grandma, to our neighbors. We made a bargain, Grandma, with the butcher as a wolf. No, no, no! No, no, you announced it! Ah. from the other world to tell us about the tailor, then all we can say is, it's all for the best. It couldn't possibly be any better. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> A blessing on my head, muzzle cough, muzzle cough. Like Grandma Zeitel said, muzzle cough, muzzle cough. We'll have a son-in-law like no one ever saw. The tailor mortal comes oil. We haven't got the man. Muzzle cough, muzzle cough. We had when we began. Muzzle cough, muzzle cough. But since your grandma came, she'll marry. What's his name? The tailor muffle comes oil. The tailor muffle comes oil. The tailor muffle comes oil. The tailor muffle comes oil.
Avram, Avram, my friend. You are such a good friend of mine. If you, I had two houses, I would give you one. Set your men Avram, you are such a good friend of mine. You know, if I had two wives, I would give well, you one. Well, you men That's wonderful. But tell me, what if you had two pair of boots? Would you give me a pair? No. Well, why not? I have two pair of boots. <laughs> Did you hear? Did you hear? Oh, I was wearing a bottle, not later. What? No! Yes! The title is wearing a bottle, not later. Yes! No! Yes. What's all the commotion? I'm sorry about that, they mean no harm. Don't they? Is there something you want? Um, yes, I would like to talk to you. I'd rather not. I've often uh, noticed you down at the booksellers. Uh, not many girls in this village like to read. Uh, would, you, would you like to borrow this book? It's very good. No, thank you. Why? Because I am not Jew. Tell me, do you feel about us the way that they, they feel about you? I did not think that you would. What would you know about me? Let me tell you something about myself, okay? I'm a pleasant person. I am honest, I am charming, I am ambitious, I am quite bright. <laughs> I'm very modest. <laughs> I don't think we should be talking this way. Look, I, I often do these things that I should not. Go ahead and take the book. It is uh, by Heinrich Heine, and he happens to be a Jew. That doesn't matter. Ah, good, you're quite right. Good, good. Okay. After, after you return it, um, we can talk about it for a while, and we can talk about life and how we feel about things, and it can all turn out quite pleasant. Yeah? Fiette, can I do something for you? No, 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 thank you. Oh, uh, wait, you forgot your book. No, it's mine. Thank you, Hava. Um, good day, Hava. Good day. I'm Fiedka. Good day, Fiedka. <laughs> Ah! 
this the little girl I carry? Is this the little boy at play?
Oh, my friends! My friends, we are gathered here to celebrate the joy of the newlyweds. A battle in Zytel. May they live together in peace to a ripe old age. Amen! Amen! And here is our beloved rabbi. May he be with us for many, many years. Amen! Amen! And now I would like to announce that the parents of the bride are giving the newlyweds the, the following. A new feather bed. Two goose pillows. Goose pillows. Goose pillows. And this pair of candlesticks. And now in our joy tonight, let us not forget those who are no longer with us, our dear departed, who lived in pain and in poverty and the hardship, and who died in the pain and the poverty and the hardship. But, but enough tears. Tonight, let us be merry and content, like our good friend Laza Wolf, who has everything in the world. Except the bride. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Laser Wolf has no ill feelings. In fact, Laser has a present for the newlyweds that he would like to present himself. Come, Laser Wolf. Like he said, I have no ill feelings. What's done is done. I am giving the newlyweds five chickens, one for each of the first five summers of their wedded life. With Lazar, you are a decent man. On behalf of my daughter and her new husband, I accept your gift. There is an old saying that when... Let me tell you, I am not marrying your daughter. I don't have to listen to your saying. If you would only wait a minute, I was only going to say... Why should I wait a minute? A man who breaks an agreement. Oh, oh, hey, oh, oh is it not oh, in the middle of a wait? I have a right to talk. What right? It is not your wedding. It should have been. Oh, 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 Yes, we all heard the wise words of the rabbi. Uh, but now, now I would like to sing a little song that I learned from my mother's knee in the key. You can keep your disease checker. I had a sight. My grandmother came to us from the grave to tell us that Zaitl should marry Marco. What sign? What grandmother? My grandfather came to me from the grave and told me that her grandmother was a big, fat liar. I'm singing. They drank on it. An agreement, a sign. It's all nonsense. No, not. Zytel wanted to marry Mottel, not Laser. A young girl decides for herself. Yes, why not? They love each other. Love? Hey. What is this? He's a radical. What happens to the matchmaker? Let's all sit down. Somebody dance with me. <laughs> it's a thing! It's no sin to dance at a wedding. Yes, but with this a girl? This is what comes from playing a wild man in your house. He is not a wild man. He is a 
little different. It does mean it's no sin. Ask the rabbi. I will, yes, well, rabbi. 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 That's it. That's it. Well, it's not exactly forbidden. There you see, it is not forbidden. And it's no sin. Now, who will dance with me? We came at a bad time, Teddy. I'm sorry, but the orders are for tonight, for the entire village. You there, musicians, play. Play! All right, you men have your orders. Do you understand? 
You, come. Come! Quickly take him into the house. Come. Well, what do you all standing around for? Clean up. Clean up. That was quite a dowry you gave my daughter, Zeitel, at the wedding. Was that necessary? Anyway, Model and Zeitel had been married almost two months now. They work very hard, but they are as poor as synagogue mice. But they are both so happy, they don't know how miserable they are. <laughs> Model keeps talking about a new machine. I know you're very busy, God, but with wars and floods and all sorts of problems like that, but can't you take a second away from your catastrophes and get it for him? How much trouble would it be? And while you're in the neighborhood, my horse's left leg. Am I bothering you too much? I'm sorry. As the good book says, why should I tell you what the good book says? 
Changes are about to take place in this country. Tremendous changes. They can't happen by themselves. So naturally, you feel that you personally oh, have to Oh, not go just and me, many people. Jews, Gentiles, many people hate what's going on. Don't you understand? But of course, you want to leave. Then goodbye. Otto, your father, the people here, they think that what happened at Seitel's wedding was a little cloudburst and it's over. Now everything will go back to being peaceful again. It won't. Horrible things are happening all over the land. Pogroms, violence, entire villages are being emptied of their people. It's reaching everywhere and it will reach here. Don't you understand? Yes, I suppose I do. I have work to do, Hoddle. It's the greatest work a man can do. Then goodbye, Percheck. Before I go, there's a question I wish to discuss with you. Yes. It is a political question. What is it? The question of marriage. This is a political question? In a theoretical sense, yes. The relationship between a man and woman known as marriage is based on mutual beliefs, a common attitude and philosophy towards society. And, and affection. And affection. This relationship is based on positive social values. It reflects a unity and solidarity. And affection. Yes. And I personally am in favour of it. Do you understand? Yes, I think you were asking me to marry. In a theoretical sense, yes, I am. I was hoping you were. Oh, then I take it you're approving. We can consider ourselves engaged, even though I'm going away. Oh, I'm very happy, Hoddle, very happy. <laughs> I used to tell myself that I had everything, but that was only half true. I had an aim in life, and that was everything, but now I even have you. I have something that I would die for, someone that I can live for too. Yes, now I have everything, not only everything, I have a little bit more. Besides having everything, I know what everything's for. I used to wonder, could there be a wife to share such a difficult, wandering kind of life? for you as soon as I can. It will be a hard life, Hoddle. But it will be less hard if we live it together. Yes. Good evening. Good evening, Red Tevia. I have some bad news. I have to leave this place. I'm sorry to when? Right away. <sighs> that is bad news, Virgin. We will all miss you. I also have some good news. You can congratulate me. <laughs> Congratulations. What for? We're engaged. 
Engaged? Yes, Father. Oh, oh, no, you're not. I know you like him and he likes you, but you're going away and you're staying here. So have a good trip, Ratchik. And my answer is no. Papa, you don't understand. <laughs> I understand. I gave my permission to Mottle and Seitel. You feel you also have a right. But you're going away, so go in good health, Patrick. And my answer is still no. Please, Papa, you do You're not listening. I say no. Rev Tevia. What is it? We are not asking for your permission. Only for your blessing. We are going to marry. You're not asking for my permission? <laughs> no, Papa. But we would like your blessing. My blessing? For what? For going over my head? Impossible! At least with Seidel and Martin, they asked me, they begged me. But for now, if I like it or not, you'll marry him. And what do you want from me? Go on, be wed, and tear out my beard and uncover my head. Tradition! Marriages must be arranged by the father. This must never be changed. One little time I pull out a thread, and where has it led? Where has it led? Where has it led to this? A man told me he is getting married. He doesn't ask me, he tells me. But first, he abandons her. He's not abandoning me, Papa. I will send for her as soon as I can and marry her. It's a new style. <laughs> They're going over my head. Unheard of. Absurd. You're going over my head. Unthinkable. Tradition! Very well, children. You have my blessing and my permission. <laughs> What else could I do? Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. Thank you, Papa. What am I going to tell your mother? Another dream? You tell her something like, you tell her something like I'm going to visit a rich uncle. Something like that. Please, Perchik. I can handle my own wife. <laughs> Golda! Golda! You are Golda. <laughs> I've just been talking to Fair Chick and Hodder. Well? They seem to be very fond of each other. Well? I have <coughs> decided to give them my permission to become engaged. I have. What? <laughs> just like this, without even asking me? Who asks you? I am the father. What is he a pauper? He has nothing. Absolutely nothing. Oh. I wouldn't exactly say that. I hear he has a rich uncle. <laughs> a very rich uncle. He's a good man, though. I like him. What's more important, Huddle loves him. Huddle loves him. It's a new world. A new world. Can you 
children milk the cow. After 25 years, why talk about love right now? Gorda, the first time I met you was on our wedding day. I was scared. I was shy. I was nervous. So was I. But my father and my mother said we'd learn to love each other. Now I'm asking. I'm your wife. I know. But do you love me? Do I love him? For 25 years I've lived with him, fought with him, starved with him. 25 years my bed is his. If that's not love, what is? Then you love me. I suppose I love you too. It, it doesn't, doesn't change a thing, thing. but <laughs> even so, after 25 years, it's nice. Someone who should know. What? 
Said gold has been arrested oh. and Hoddle's gone to Kiev. Oh. Mottle studies dancing. Oh. Tevye's acting strange. Oh. Spritzer has the measles. Oh. Bielka has the mumps. Oh. No, really. And that's what comes from men and women dancing. <laughs> The rabbi of two was also arrested. I give him my regard, this Moses of yours. I always thought he was a good man. Tell him I rely on his honor to treat my daughter well. Tell him that. Papa, God, I know so we should see each other again.
care of her. See that she dresses warm. What were you and he talking about? Nothing. We were just talking. Papa, Fiatke and I have known each other for a long time now. And Papa, we feel that it's... I would be much happier if you and he would remain friends from a distance. You must not forget who that man is and who you are. He has a name, Papa. Of course. All creatures have earth, on earth have a name. Fiatke is not a creature, Papa. Fiatke is a man. Who says that he isn't? It is just that he is a different kind of a man. As the good book says, each must seek his own kind. In other words, a bird may love a fish, but where would they build their home together? The world is changing, Papa. No! Some things do not change with us. Some things never change with us. We don't feel that way. We! Fiatke and I... We want to be married. Are you out of your mind? Don't you know what that means? Marrying outside of the faith. My mother, please. No, Hannah. Never talk to me about this again. Never see that man again. Never mention his name again. Do you hear me? Yes, Papa. I hear you. Ah, you're finally here. Let's go home. It's time for supper. I want to see Mottle's new machine. You can see it some other time. It's late. Quiet, woman. Before I get angry. And when I get angry, even flies forget to fly. I'm very <laughs> frightened of you. After we finish supper, I'll faint. Come home. Golda, I am the man in the family. I am the head of the house. I want to see Mottle's new machine. 
Now! Now let's go home! <laughs> that I have, the right to be sick, the right to be hungry, the right to work like a horse. And, ye God, I am sick and tired of pulling this car. I know, I should push it a while. Daniel! What? Daniel! Daniel! What is it? Daniel. What? It's Harper. She left home this morning with Vietka. I looked everywhere for her. I even went to see the priest. And they told me they were married. Married? Go, go home, Golda. We have other children at home. Go home, Golda. Hava. Hava is dead to us. We will. understand what's happening today. Everything is all a blur. All I can see is a happy child, a sweet little dirty word, Havala. Can I accept them? Can I deny everything I believe in?
can I turn my back on my faith, my people? If I try to bend that bar, I will break. they'll be engaged. Nothing to worry about later. No looking around, Golda. Their future all signed and sealed. Well, which one for which one? What's the difference? Take your pick. Golda, is Red Tevye at home? Yes, but he's in the house. Is Call there some father. sort of trouble? Go home. So your parents are talking. What is it? Why are you all gathered together like a bunch of goats? What is it? No, we need to speak to him. Tevia. 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 Have you seen the constable today? No. There are rumors in town. We thought because you knew him so well, maybe he told you what is true and what is not. What room? Someone from Solidin has told me that there has been an edict issued in Welcome, Your Honor. What's the news in the world? I see you have company, Teddy. They are my friends. Well, it's just as well. But I have to say it's for their ears also. Tevye, how much time do you need to sell your home and all of your household goods? What? Why should I sell my home? Is it in anybody's way? I came here to tell you that you are going to have to leave Anatevka. Leave And how did I come to deserve such an honor? Not just you, old friend. All of you must leave. At first I thought you would be spared, Teddy, because your daughter Carver married that... I understand. At any case, it affects all of you. You are going to have to leave. I know that this corner of the world has always been your home, but you will still have to leave. You are not the only ones. Your people must leave all of the villages. The Lodden and the village of Vlavalevka, this whole district must be empty. I have an order here. It says you must sell your homes and be out of here in only three days. Three days? You have all your life you would carry out this order. I have nothing to do with this. When will you understand? We understand. What if we refuse to go? You will be forced out if you stay. We will stay out there. We will fight. Against our army? I wouldn't advise that, my friend. But I have some advice for you. This is still my home, yes. my land. Get off my land. Yes. Get, off. Get off my land. You have three days. Go. Come. But after a lifetime? A piece of paper and get the house. We should get together with the people of Zalan. Oh, yes. yes. Maybe they have a plan. Yes. Oh, and maybe we could defend ourselves. Yes. 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 An eye for an eye and a tooth yes. for a tooth. Yes. 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 Very good, very good. That way the whole world will be blind and toothless. <laughs> Rabbi, we have been waiting for the Messiah all our lives. Wouldn't this be a good time for him to come? 
have to wait for him someplace else. Meanwhile, let's start packing. Ah, uh, he's right. I'll see you before I go. Yeah, I'm I'm right. Right. But I have more than 100 bottles of vodka. What will I do with them? And, and where can a man go with a wife, with parents, and three children? Well, and Atevka hasn't exactly been the Garden of Eve. Well, that's true. After all, what have we got here? A little bit of this, a little bit of that. A pot. A pan. A broom. A hat. Somebody should have set a match to this place. Long ago. A bench. A tree. So what's a stove? Go to house. People who pass through Alatenka don't even know that they have been here. A sleep of a piece of cloth. What do we need? Nothing much. Only on a telka. On a telka. On a telka. Under that overworked. On a telka. Where else could Sabbath be so sweet? We'll be staying with Uncle Abram, but he doesn't know it yet. I wish you and the baby were coming with us. Oh, we'll be staying in Warsaw till we have enough money to join you. Mortal, be very careful with these. My mother and father, may they rest in peace, gave them to us on our wedding day. Oh, come, children, help me pack the rest of the clothes. Golda, Golda, darling. Oh, I had to see you before I left. Oh, you remember yesterday, I didn't know where to go, what to do with these old bones. And now I know. You want to hear? I'll tell you. Golda, darling, all my life I've dreamed of going to one place. And now I'll walk, I'll crawl, I'll get there. Guess where? Now you'll never guess. Every year at Passover, what do we say? Next year in Jerusalem, next year in the Holy Land. You're going to the Holy Land. You guessed. And you know why? In my sleep, my husband, my Aaron, came to me and said, Yenta, go to the Holy Land. Well, usually, of course, I wouldn't listen, because as good as he was, too much brains, he wasn't blessed with. But in my sleep, it's a sign, right? Of course, right. So somehow or other, I'm going to the Holy Land. 
Oh, and you want to know what I'll do there? Well, I'm a matchmaker, no? I'll arrange marriages, yes? So I'm going to the Holy Land to help our people increase and multiply. It's my mission. It's over. Oh, Golda, I will miss you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Yenta. Be well and go in peace. Maybe next time, Golda, we will meet on a happier occasion. Meanwhile, we suffer. Oh, how we suffer. We suffer in silence, right? Of course, right. Goldo, we have to get finished. Goldo, we have to leave soon. Leave, it sounds so easy. Yeah. They will join us soon, Muddle and Zeitl and the baby. Uh, you will see. That Muddle, he is a person. And Huddle and her chick, when will we ever see them? Do they come visiting from Siberia every Sabbath? You know what she writes. He sits in prison. She works. Soon he will be set free, and together they will turn the world upside down. They couldn't be happier. And the other children will be with us. Not all. All. Come, Golda. We have to get finished. First, I have to sweep the floor. Sweep the floor? I don't want to leave a dirty house. <laughs> well, tell you. I'm on my way. Where are you going? To Chicago, in America. My wife, Rumpeter, may she rest in peace, has a brother there. That's nice. I, I hate him. But a relative is a relative. <laughs> Goodbye, Tim. Goodbye, Audrey. God be with you. Zeitl, are they finished inside? Almost, Papa. Papa! Oh, Papa will see you. I want him to. I want to say goodbye to him. Oh, but he will not listen. At least he will hear. Well, maybe it would be better if I went inside and I told Mama oh. that you... Oh, oh Mama! stay among people who can do these things to others. We wanted you to know that, Papa. Goodbye, Papa. Mama. Mr. Octavia, we too are also leaving. Some of us are driven away by these edicts, but others of us, we are driven away by silence. Oh, 
that. We can leave these parts. No, we can't. All right, we take them. We're going on a train in a boat. We're going on a train in a boat. Stop that. Behave yourselves. You're not in America yet. Come. <laughs> we have to leave. Thank you. 